tell you the truth. And in the age to come, eternal life. Eternal life. That was the beginning question of this passage. What must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus redefines it, and it's not about what you do, it's what he's done. And as you come and as you follow him, and as you go through these things, you leave, you follow, you will be assured of eternal life. John chapter 17, verse 3 says, Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you've sent. That's the prayer of Jesus. And he defines what eternal life is. Eternal life is when we know God as our Father and we know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. It's in the relationship that we experience eternal life. It's not when we die and go to heaven. It's when we receive him and we know him and we understand God now is our Father and Jesus is our Lord and Savior. And it's out of that close, intimate relationship with him that heaven comes to earth. It comes to us. In his presence is fullness of joy. And so we find the reality that as we experience that personal relationship with him, and as we grow and continue, we deal with our our flaws, we deal with our patterns, our our habits, uh, those things. We we deal with those as we're on the way. We don't have to wait until we get it all perfect before we can follow him. We just have to do what he says. Release this, come and follow me. As we come and follow him, guess what? You've got the best life ever. Doesn't matter how much money you make, when you're with Jesus, he owns it all. You know, if you go fish, who knows? You might catch a whopper or you might catch something that has a gold coin in it. You never know how he's going to provide. We just know that he will. Why? Because he's a good father. He's a good, good father. And it's the security of the child who knows his father, who knows that I can come and I can walk with him. And that's really all I need to be concerned about. He will provide. He will give the diagnosis when we need the diagnosis. He'll give the the procedures as we need the procedures. He'll bring us to the right place at the right time for his glory. Because he loves you. He just flat out loves you. Look in the mirror and tell yourself, he loves you. He really does. And that's the good news from the gospel today. We find that in the kingdom of God, things are so different than the things of this world and the culture that we have in the Western Hemisphere. And so we see that the kingdom reverses almost the values. It's it's the divine reversal, the kingdom reversal. The first will become last, and the last will become first. You know, with Lazarus, uh, who's, who's the beggar in the story, the parable that Jesus talks about. There's a rich man. He's got all this lavish food and he's just having a good time and poor Lazarus at the gate and he's starving. But when you get into the kingdom, Lazarus is the one who is feasting with the Lord and the rich man is the one who's without. There's an upside down kingdom here. Oftentimes, it got almost so that as, as I was growing up, I was just thinking, well, if I want this, I probably should go the other way because whatever I want seems to be the wrong thing. So Lord, should I go this way? It served me well in a lot of instances. It also messed me up a time or two, but uh, because the, the Lord puts the desires in our heart for what we do desire as we continue to grow and we get with him and and the kingdom develops and all of a sudden we get a kingdom heart, a kingdom mindset, and then our passions and desires shift. But in those early stages where you're self-centered and you're selfish and all you're thinking about is me, 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 then it was like, okay, I probably should go the other way. And it's amazing how that worked out for me 
early in my development. Mm -hmm. The greatest among you will be servant of all. Hmm. Why? Because this is what Jesus modeled. The Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. He didn't come to be served. He came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And so as he gets ready at the end of his life, nobody's washing the feet. So Jesus takes the towel and the basin and he washes the disciples' feet. And we're just saying, I don't know about you, but when that happens, it's like, what? Don't, don't let Jesus wash smelly feet. But he's modeled for us every step of the way so that we will understand humility is the way of the kingdom. Humility is the way that we need to walk. He gives grace to the humble. He opposes the proud. So anytime you find yourself getting a little arrogant, a little proud, just realize I probably ought to shift on the other foundation. I need to get on the foundation of humility. Humble yourself, therefore, under the Lord, his mighty hand, so that he can lift you up at the right time. He never puts us down. He will call us to humility so he can exalt us.